Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to model steel and concrete buildings in RAM structural system. To begin this training course, we're going to get started by launching RAM structural system and then creating a new model. On your desktop, go ahead and double click on the RAM structural system icon to launch the product. Once RAM structural system opens, you're going to be immediately put into the RAM manager. From here, we're going to start by creating a new model. In the File menu bar, go ahead and select File, followed by New. And then you can create your new model and locate it to a drive where you have read-write access. In addition to that, we're also going to select our units. Now, RAM Structural System is capable of creating models using the English unit system, the SI unit system, or the metric unit system. For today's training, we're going to be focusing on the English unit system. Now, RAM Structural System automatically opens to the RAM Manager, which is basically the hub of RAM Structural System. From the manager, you can create, select, and delete RAM structural system databases. You can specify your design criteria. You can enter the RAM modeler or any of the analysis and design modules and access the post-processing commands. Now, if we take a look at the left-hand side of the RAM manager, you're going to see your design toolbar. This is how we're going to access the various modules of the program. They are listed from top to bottom, reflecting your typical workflow in RAM structural system. We're going to be focusing our efforts today in the RAM modeler, which will contain the three-dimensional model of the structure, including all members, gravity loading information, your slab and deck assignments, and your story data. Let's go ahead and enter the RAM modeler. Now that we have created our new RAM structural system model and entered the RAM modeler, we're going to spend the rest of this video setting up our model so that we can start creating our structural objects. This process will include creating floor layouts, creating the story data, and creating a grid system. So let's go ahead and get started with our floor layouts. In the menu bar, we're going to select layout, followed by type, and then select. From this dialog, we can create the different layouts of our structure. Now, layouts in RAM structural system are used to model different unique floor plans of a building structure. For this model, we're going to have three separate layouts. We're going to have a concrete floor, a steel floor, and our roof structure. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and select the layout we would like to work on first. And for this model, we'll go ahead and select the concrete floor and then click Select. Now to access the different layouts of your building structure, you can use the Layout pull-down menu at the top of the screen. Now after you create your floor layout, you're ready to also create your story data. To create your story data, we're going to select the Story option in the menu bar. Now the story data is used to assign layout types to various levels of a building structure. So for our model, we're going to start at the base of the structure and then work our way up. So our first elevated floor will be level number one. We are going to call it first floor. And then we're going to enter the elevation of the top story height. Now our base of our structure is at zero feet. So our first floor level will be at 12 feet. We're going to select the floor type we want, our layout type. We're going to use our concrete floor for this first floor level. And then we're going to let the program know if this is a splice level. Now this splice flag is used to indicate levels at which the column size or concrete reinforcement in a column can change. So we'll go ahead and say no to a column splice. And then we'll click the Add button. And then we're going to add the other floors as needed for our particular structure. So let's call our next one second floor. We will be modeling our steel floor layout at this level. We'll click the Add button. And then finally, we're going to have our roof system.
Once you've entered your story data, we can go ahead and click OK. Now what you're going to notice is that in the layout pull down menu, the layouts are going to be reordered in the order that they appear in the story data. So here you can work from the bottom of your structure all the way up. Now the last thing we're going to work on in this video is how to create a grid system. So what we're going to do is go to our layout menu bar option. We're going to select grids and we're going to say we want to create or edit a grid system. Now in RAM structural system we can create orthogonal or radial grid systems and your model can have more than one grid system for different levels if you need to. So for my particular model, I am going to create both an orthogonal and a radial grid system. So first we're going to have our orthogonal grid system. I'm going to call this grid system main. I'm going to enter a datum basically for or an origin for this grid system and I'm going to enter it at y and x equals zero. Now in RAM structural system, your horizontal axes of your structures are represented by your their x and y coordinates, x being I guess horizontally and Y being vertically on the screen, your vertical axis in RAM structural system is your Z axis. I'm also going to enter a rotation of zero. And once we're done, we'll go ahead and click on the add button. And you can see our first grid system has been created and it's ready for you to specify your grid coordinates. In addition to that, I'm also going to create a radial grid system. So I'm going to call this one Canopy. I'm going to say it's a radial grid system, and then I'm going to enter its origin. I'm going to enter it at an x equals 0 and a y equals 53 feet. Once you create your grid systems, you're ready to add some grid coordinates to them. We'll work on our main orthogonal grid system first. So I'm going to highlight the main grid system and then click Edit Grids. And then I'm ready to start creating some grid systems. Now I'm going to work on my X grid system first. I'm going to enter the label of my first grid line. I'm going to enter it as A. And I'm going to enter a grid coordinate. Where is it starting at? So I'm going to say it's at starting at X equals negative 20 feet. I'm going to enter a grid spacing of 20 feet and then it can automatically enter additional grid lines if I ask the program to do that for me. So I'm going to say enter two additional grid lines. So basically it's going to generate grid line A and then two additional ones which will be B and C. They're going to be 20 feet apart. So let's go ahead and click the add button and we're going to see that the grid lines have been created. I'm not done with this direction. I'm also going to create a few additional grid lines, but their spacings are different. So I'm going to enter them in a second step. So we're going to start with grid line D. We're going to say that's at X equals 52 feet. I want to create three additional grid lines at 32 feet apart. And then we'll go ahead and click the add button. So now I have grid lines A through G in this particular direction. Now that we've created our X grids, let's go ahead and enter some Y grid coordinates. For this direction, we're going to use numbers. So I'm going to start my grid at number one. I'm going to put grid line number one at Y equals zero feet. I'm going to enter an additional grid spacing of 26.5 feet. And I'm going to ask the program to generate a few additional grids. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and also take a look at some of the other options that we have available here. So for the labeling field, I've asked the program to use automatic ascending labeling scheme, which means that since my first grid line is at one, it's going to automatically increase that to two, three, four, if I'm asking the program to generate a few additional grids for me. I can also enter some extends. So if I want to create a grid line that's a little longer than the default shown, I can go ahead and do that. I can, I can control the ends for which the labels are indicated at. I'm going to go ahead for this direction and enter them at the J end. And I know I'm working with feet, but I can also enter the grids in inches as well. So let's go ahead and ask the program to generate those grids for us. And we're going to finish that off by clicking OK. 
Now that our main grid system has some grids in it, let's also work on our radial grid system. So I'm going to select my canopy grid and ask the program to edit some grids for me. I'm going to start with a grid label AA. I'm working on the radial direction. I'm going to enter a grid angle of 120 degrees, a grid increment of every 30 degrees, and I'm going to ask it to create four additional grids for me. I'm going to finish this off by clicking on the Add button. In addition to that, I'm also going to enter some circular grids. Here, I'm going to enter a grid label of C1, and I'm going to enter a radial distance at 26.5 feet. For this one, I'm not going to create any additional grid lines, just the one grid. So we'll just go ahead and click Add. We're going to finish this off by clicking OK. And then we're going to click OK again. And be sure to save your model. Now that we've created our grid systems, we need to assign them to the different layouts of our structure. So to assign a grid system, we're going to use the Select Grid Systems icon. And from here, you can select which layout you want and which grid system you want to show. So for my concrete floor, I would like to see both my main and my canopy grid systems. So let's go ahead and click OK. And now I can see my grid systems on screen. If I want to assign a grid to another layout, I'm going to go back to the same dialog. This time, I'm going to select the steel floor, and then I'm going to select the main grid system. And we'll go ahead and click OK. So if I wanted to see the effect of that, I can go up to the steel floor and see the main grid system. And I told the program I'm not interested in the radial grid for this level. Now I'm going to go ahead and leave the roof layout empty because what I'm going to do later on is I'm going to copy some structural data from another floor to that layout. Now a layout, if you choose to use that workflow, can't contain any objects, including grid systems, if you choose to copy one layout to another. So I'm going to leave that one completely empty. Now a few final notes on grid lines is to note that grid lines can be moved, deleted, or added at any point through the modeling process. Now if members have been modeled in conjunction with a grid intersection, then moving the grid line will have a stretching effect on the member and its supporting framing. Again, if you need to go back and edit or add any grids, you could just click on this Create Edit Grid Systems icon and it'll bring you right back to this dialog. We are now at our point in our workflow where we are ready to add some structural members to our model. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.